There is another kind of apology that I think I wanted to share with you today. And that is that I have, I've committed a sin of oversimplification over all these years. And, and this is something that it might resonate with you. And if it does, I'd love to talk about how, on what dimensions this resonates with you. But to start off, I realized that it's really nice to have some quotes to start. And so to start us off, I have a couple of quotes, some of my favorites. Uh, have you seen Dune? The, the new Dune? You all, oh, have you seen the part two already? Not yet. <laughs> I'm going to spoiler a line from part two, but it could belong to part one as well. So no, no harm is, is intended. And I don't think any harm will be, will be done. But so the first, the first quote is from our usual guide in terms of, uh, of storytelling with uh, Joseph Campbell. And there is an audio archive of everything that Campbell that has been recorded of lectures and informal workshops held at the Esalen Institute in, in California. And it's a magnificent trove. Now it was on Spotify. Now you can find it somewhere. You can download it. The Joseph Campbell, Campbell Foundation sometimes publishes it, sometimes not, but you can find, find it if you're resourceful. And there's some terrific stuff. I was starting from lecture one and it's like 60, 80, 100 hours of content. And there's this very simple quote, mythology is other people's religions. And it's, I think it's a good lens to, to, to use to talk about what we're going to talk about today. And the second quotation that I think was very striking was from, from, from the second episode of Dune. And at some point passing through a gorge, Paul becoming what they will become says, our resources are limited. Fear is all we have. And, and I think this is, this is very much a current state of a lot of us, especially when it comes to promoting ourselves. And, and in my case, I think fear was all I had. As 10 years ago, I embarked on my mission to fix communication through storytelling. And I didn't even use the, the name storytelling. And already storytelling is a translation of mythology so that it fits in the workplace. Because if I, if I go in a boardroom and I say, oh, today we're going to learn mythology in order to create a better pitch, most probably I wouldn't get the job. Okay, if, if my proposal said, let's learn myths and religions in order to, to create. If you think about it, if you think about it, and now today we're going to think about it a lot, it makes a lot of sense. But as I started, the first thing I did was like, I need to translate this into business speak. And this is exactly what I did. So for a very, very, very long time, all I did was propose that we go on a journey. This journey looks like a mountain. So there's ups and downs. It's not so complicated. It's eight steps. And at the beginning, it's based on the hero's journey. But at the beginning, you define the what and the why. And then you get into this, uh, this kind of complicated situation, right? You, you, get, you get to a complicated situation where you want to produce some, some change in your, in your audience, but your audience doesn't want that. And there your job begins. And this is, this is where most of the presentation happens. And then all you have to do once you solve this is to tell me what the big idea is. And there we go. We just end the presentation. And the end is sort of a formula. It's, it's a little bit like the beginning. The beginning is a formula. The end is a formula. And if you think about stories, myths, etc., the beginning and the end is usually very formulaic. And they lived happily ever after. And at the beginning, the heroine at the beginning of the story, she says, no, I want to stay home. I don't want to start with, I want to go on an adventure. I want to stay with Toto or I want to. I want to stay within my company, with it, my family, and so on and so forth. And then what I, what I was hiding behind this, so this is, this is simple. It's sort of eight steps. Everybody can understand that in a 30-minute in a workshop. I haven't explained it to you today. It wasn't, it's not the purpose of today. If you want me to explain it, I can do it. I can do it afterwards. However, I was hiding this. So this is how I came to what I just, what I've just shared with you. Now, are you, have you ever seen this sort of strange diagram you have? Because this is in all the storytelling thingies, right? This is the hero's journey. And I had made this again with the thinking, I can't, I'm not allowed to fear. Uh, so I had made a palatable version of, of the whole hero's journey so that you could bring it, potentially you could bring it to, to the workplace. And so, for instance, instead of saying, 
like the step of the hero's journey says, in the belly of the whale. And I said, too much information. Okay, so that's, that's, that's easier to approach. It's, it's much more business-like. Or instead of saying the meeting with the goddess, there is access to knowledge, which is which much more businessy, right? Do you start getting my point? There is something lost. There is some information that by simplifying, we lose completely. So for instance, if, if I were to just say that the theory of evolution is survival of the fittest, for most people, it's a pretty, pretty decent translation, right? However, uh, I'm completely missing the point. And I'm completely missing the point that the fittest is a mutation happening for a vast number of reasons, amongst which genetic defects, viruses, etc., that are the opposite of our ideal of the fittest. And so in, in terms of understanding evolution, if we just stay on the headline, we're losing all of the content. And I think it's the same here. And maybe it's the same for, for a lot of you as well, that there is something holding us back and it's really chaining us to the wall, say, telling us you're not allowed to use that language. And now in this case, this is Matteo Cassese business storytelling. We can go to the real thing. And so the real thing tells us that there are two worlds represented by above this line and, and below this line. And these two worlds are completely different. We start from here. We get called to the adventure. And at some point, we, we get over the threshold. Once we get through the threshold, we are in the adventure world. And what happens here is that we need to, all the rules change. And we need to prepare. We need to get our armor. We need to learn our techniques until we get to the big ordeal. In the big ordeal, the heroine dies. She is killed and reborn right after Easter. So we know this story. And then why doesn't the story end here? Because now at this point, at the X, she is completely almighty. She has to learn the way to go back home and to go back to this, to this ordinary world. And now this is way more interesting because now we've, for instance, we introduced the category of life and death, which again, banned from the meeting room. We cannot talk about death in the meeting room. And, and so we can, we can start working on the real thing. So this is, this is exactly the same visualization. Let me uh, focus it in the right, in the right way, where we have all of the 17 steps plus the crossing of the thresholds in the actual language of myth. And I think my, my repentance today is having gone too far away from, from this language in order to make it more accessible because I don't think it has become more accessible. And what I would like you to think about is, is there any other aspect of your work right now, whatever that may be, where you are doing something like this, where you're sort of hiding the true knowledge, like the deep, interesting knowledge that speaks a strange language, the meeting with the goddess, death and resurrection, the magic flight, a lot of words that are like very triggering, right? Magic, everybody has an opinion on magic. We don't talk about gods or goddesses and death, resurrection. When was the last time we had a conversation about resurrection? 